Hey guys, welcome back to Loft Sports. It's Tyler, and uh, thankfully, we are just a couple of days away from the start of college football. Well, at least the start of Notre Dame college football. Um, it's been a long, hot summer here in the South, and I am so ready for cooler weather and college football. I can't tell you guys how much, um, especially the last few days with this 95 to 100 degree heat and humidity, it's just been brutal. It's, it's terrible. But we're almost there. Notre Dame goes to Ireland to take on Navy. And this video is really a season prediction video. It's not really focused on the Navy game. Um, let's be honest, Marcus Freeman in year two, Navy has a new head coach this year. This should not be a close game. Notre Dame should thrash Navy. A um, lot of respect for Navy. Obviously, their, their program is about more than football. You know, kids go to Notre Dame for the most part to play football. Some do go there for the education, but most of them are there to play college football at a high level and progress and potentially go on and play in the NFL. Kids go to Navy for an entirely different reason. So I want to give a shout out to them. Um, obviously, their you know their their purpose is much bigger than what they do on Saturday. They protect and they serve our nation. So I want to give them credit where that's due. But ultimately, this Notre Dame team with Sam Hartman coming in, transfer from Wake Forest, the defense having eight starters back. This should not be close. So this video is really centered around the 2023 Notre Dame season and what I think Notre Dame's potential is and what I think ultimately they will do uh, and where they'll finish. So obviously the big news is Sam Hartman comes in. He's the starting quarterback. He put up a lot of numbers just down the road from me in Winston-Salem at Wake Forest. I'm really excited. I think this is the best quarterback play Notre Dame will have had coming into a season since the Brady Quinn days. Um, we had a lot of excitement about Jimmy Clausen. He had some flashes in the pan, but ultimately he was kind of disappointing. Um, obviously, we had Everett Golson. He had some flashes, a lot of turnovers. Tommy Reese was good, but he was limited with what he could do. Deshaun Kaiser had a great first year in relief of Malik Zaire. After he got hurt, his career was cut short by injury. And then Kaiser had a great first year and then had a terrible second year. Um, Wimbush, up and down. Ian Book took over. Book was very good, won a lot of games, the most in Notre Dame history. But ultimately, um, this is the most confident I've been at the most important position in football going into a season uh, that I can remember going back to the Brady Quinn days in 2006 after we had that great 2005 season under Charlie Weiss. Feels a little similar in that respect. This is Freeman's second year. Um, obviously, I expect the defense to be a lot better than those Charlie Weiss defenses ever were. Um, I do want to talk real quick, though. Logan Diggs is a huge departure. A lot of Notre Dame fans have brushed that off. Oh, we got a deep running back room. Listen, Logan Diggs is an NFL running back, and I think he's going to be among the best in the country this season. Brian Kelly and LSU will utilize him. He will have a fantastic year, and I wish him nothing but the best down there on the bayou. He's a homegrown kid. He was homesick at Notre Dame. He did some great things for us, but ultimately, I'll never fault a young man for wanting to transfer and do what's best for himself. In this case, I totally understand it. He's going back home. He wants to play in Louisiana. Brian Kelly moved back you know, took the LSU job, so he's following the coach that he committed to out of high school. I can understand and appreciate that. I have no grudge against Logan Diggs, but I don't understand Irish fans that are brushing this off. Logan Diggs with Audric Estime would have been the best one-two punch in the nation, in my opinion, or in the top consideration for sure. George has obviously got a stacked backfield. I'm sure Alabama, Ohio State, your usual suspects will have great players there, but Audric Estime and Logan Diggs, and with Chris Tyree sprinkled in. I know he's been moved to receiver, but that would have been a three-headed monster that no defense wants to manage against. Um, NFL guys that can catch the ball out of the backfield, estimates a downhill runner, that hurts. Lo Logan Diggs made some plays against South Carolina that are very NFL-esque, catching the ball out of the backfield and running 70 yards away from corners and safeties. That's the kind of player that can change a game, and that's the kind of player that Notre Dame needs on offense. Now, Estime is great. 
He will carry the load. We've got some other young running backs that I think will be productive. But to just sit here and say, ah, uh, we lost an NFL running back, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. And I wanted to address that. Um, ultimately, you know, losing Isaiah Foskey on defense does hurt to the NFL. He was a premier pass rusher. And then losing the security to blanket one of the greatest tight ends in school history of the real tight end university. It's not Iowa. It's not Miami. It's Notre Dame. Notre Dame produces consistent tight end play every year. I understand they maybe not have produced the best tight ends, but I think the position, especially the last 10 to 15 years, has been stout. Notre Dame is one of the tight end views. I think we deserve that uh, feather in our cap. So let's take a look at the season. We open up against Navy. Not going to spend a lot of time on this game. It should be a dominant performance. We've had Navy pretty much figured out the last few years. We crushed them in 2019 when they were really good. They've been kind of down mostly the last several years, which is unfortunate. I like to see them do well. But this is a Navy team that's rebuilding. They're starting all over. They got a new coach. It, this should be a blowout. This game should be over at halftime. The hype around Notre Dame, we're playing this game on foreign soil. The last time we played Navy in Ireland, we absolutely destroyed them to open the 2012 season. I expect this to be a similar result. I think this is a game that needs to be like a 41-17. to 17. I think Navy will score some points. You're not going to shut them out necessarily. Um, and the triple option offense can be hard to prepare for. It may be a 14 to 14 game at the end of the first quarter, but ultimately I expect Notre Dame to lean on a lighter Navy team, be faster, more physical, more aggressive. And by the third quarter, the talent should be obvious and it really should be a blowout. Um, you know, this game should be over at half. It should be like 31 to, to 10 or 31 to 14 at half. And then by the start of the fourth quarter, we're putting backups in to just run the clock out. And I'm expecting like a 41-17, 41-20 type win. Um, the spread is 20 and a half. That's a pretty good number. Uh, if you wanted to bet the plus 20 and a half for Navy, just because, you know, the way they play football, um, a turnover here or there, maybe, you know, they keep within three touchdowns. But this should be a route. Let's be real. Then we come home and play Tennessee State. The first time we've ever played an FCS team. I don't love that we're playing an FCS team. One of the things I've always kind of used in arguments when arguing with SEC fans and Notre Dame doesn't play any any Division II or lower level teams. Well, we threw that out the window when we scheduled Tennessee State. But on the bright side, it should be a pretty stress-free Saturday in South Bend. We should win that game going away. Then we go to NC State, about an hour up the road from where I reside in Raleigh, North Carolina, to play a stout NC State team. Dave Dorn has been the coach at NC State for about 12 or 13 years. This will not be a, an easy game. This is a sneaky game. This is not one of the three big games. Obviously, the big three are the Clemson, Ohio State, and USC game. But I think this is the fourth toughest game on the schedule. It's on the road. It's early in the season. NC State has, two, uh, has a tune-up game. I think it's against UConn or something in week one. So this should be a, a team that's 1-0 against a team that's 2-0. It'll probably be a noon kickoff. These are never easy games. Ultimately, though, in, in Marcus Freeman's second year, third year with the program because he took over head coach at the end of the first season when Kelly left, this should be a game where Notre Dame probably has a scare, but the talent is enough. And Notre Dame with Sam Hartman, who's played NC State and played at NC State multiple times, this should be a situation where everybody knows what's going on and we wear them down and we pull away. We might not win by more than 10 points, but we win that game and we show, hey, this is a team that we're better than and we're going to go out there and beat them. Um, something we kind of did with North Carolina last year on the road. We did it with Syracuse. Good teams, dangerous teams with good players, but ultimately Notre Dame's better and they show it and they just wear the other team down and break their will to compete. Then we come home against Central Michigan, should be an easy win. I know we've had trouble with MAC teams and, and Sunbelt teams over the last couple of years, Toledo, Marshall, but for crying out loud, this should be a game that, that Notre Dame wins. I know it's sandwiched in between NC State and Ohio State, but on sheer talent alone, when you only get 12 games and 12 opportunities to line up on the field in, in the fall, this isn't baseball. You're not rolling out there 50, 60 times a season or even basketball where you play 30 plus games. Oh, well, we just kind of overlooked this game because we know we got a big one coming up. You've got to win and win convincingly 
in the four-team playoff era. This is the last year of the four-team playoff era. Don't slip up and lose or, or play down to your competition. Go out and beat a MAC team that you're clearly better than. So I think we start 4-0. and Then we start getting into the, the big-time games. In comes Ohio State. Now, Ohio State will tell you they were disappointed with the season last year because they got thumped by Michigan. But they were a field goal away from beating Georgia and probably winning the national championship with all respect to TCU. I think Ohio State probably wins the game against TCU if they get by Georgia. Um, obviously, Ohio State's starting over at quarterback. C.J. Stroud's gone. They do have the best receiver in the country, Marvin Harrison Jr., Guys, I, I don't know why, but this is a game Notre Dame should win. We have the veteran quarterback. We, we're at home. This is a game Notre Dame should win. But Ohio State just reloads. They're one of the three or four teams. They're up there with Alabama. They're up there with Georgia. They recruit at a different level than even us at Notre Dame. And I just, Notre Dame has not won a game like this. You can say the two wins against Clemson, but Trevor Lawrence didn't play in 2020. And Clemson's team last year really wasn't that good. They just got by because the ACC, frankly, isn't very good. I think Ohio State comes into South Bend and beats Notre Dame. Until Notre Dame beats a top flight program when they are on top, when they are a top five team, and when they go on and finish in the top five, Clemson fell apart at the end of the year. They got blown out by Tennessee in the bowl game, and they got beat by South Carolina. Now, we did beat South Carolina, too, who was on fire at the end of the year after they throttled Tennessee. Um, great win for us last year at the end of the year, by the way. But until we beat a top, until we beat Georgia or Alabama or Ohio State and they have a top five, top ten season, I am not picking Notre Dame to win a game of this magnitude. We haven't done it really in the last 20 years of my life, so there's no reason for me to think we can do it this time. I think Ohio State beats Notre Dame in South Bend. Also, I got a feeling a lot of the Notre Dame fans are going to sell their tickets to Ohio State fans. It's going to be another Georgia, another Nebraska game, and that irritates me, but that's a whole nother. I'm not going to go down that road. We come back, we play at Duke. Duke could be sneaky this year, but I, 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 this should be an easy win. Notre Dame better be pissed off that they, beat, that they lost to Ohio State, and they better get right and go on the road and beat Duke. Then another tricky road game against Louisville. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people liking Louisville to be a 7-8 win team. Jeff Brom was a great coach at Purdue. He's back home at Louisville. This is a tricky game for Notre Dame, but again, we're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster. We should be beating teams like Louisville. Marcus Freeman knows I've got to win the big games, but I've got to avoid these bad games. This is where Brian Kelly did a pretty good job for the most part. He had some Tulsas. He had some slip-ups early in his career. But last season, if Marcus Freeman doesn't lose to Stanford and Marshall, we win 10 games, 11 games, and people are like, wow, what a great first year. But because we had those Ugh, Stanford and Ugh, Marshall – that really hurt last season. Um, now, the way we finished and by beating South Carolina in the bowl game, people kind of forgot about it. But in year two, you can't lose these teams. Now, Louisville's not a bad team. I'm not saying they're Stanford or Marshall by any means. But these are the kind of games you've got to find a way to just win. Doesn't matter how sexy it is. Doesn't matter how dominant you look. Just win these games, baby. Just win. And that's all we care about. Then you come home and you play USC. USC is going to be on top of the world. Caleb Williams, number one pick in everybody's mind. USC is going to be ranked very, very highly. Their schedule is pretty easy early on. Um, I think they avoid Utah until the end of the year. Um, this is a situation where Notre Dame has a chance, a mulligan, to get back on top. And USC is not a program that we should be intimidated by. Now, they are scary when they get a coach like Pete Carroll. Lincoln Riley is, is very good. He's proven he can win at Oklahoma, and he turned USC around. They were a game away from going to the playoff last year when they ran into a really good Utah team in his first year. This is going to be a titanic matchup. I think Notre Dame gets a signature win here because it's at home. I think this is the kind of game where on a cool October night, Notre Dame can run the football and get after Caleb Williams. And I think this is where having a quarterback of Sam Hartman's caliber is the difference between 
losing this game and getting the, the, the victory that we need to keep our season going. I think Notre Dame beats USC. Huge upset for Notre Dame. It kind of shows that this rivalry is going to be hot. It could be a back and forth. You beat us last year. We beat you this year. But Notre Dame really needs to win at least one of these three games. I think they get Southern Cal at home. Pittsburgh, always a tough opponent for Notre Dame. Little bit of a rebuild there with Pat Narduzzi, but it's not going to be easy. This is another Louisville and NC State game. It's a good team. It's not a great team. We've seen Pitt beat Clemson and Florida State over the years. They rise up and they beat teams that are above their pedigree, but this is not an easy game. Luckily, it's after a bye. So we get to celebrate the USC win. We get to soak it in. We get to kind of regroup, reestablish ourselves, and then come out and play football after a week off against Pitt at home. That's the important thing. I think we win a tough dogfight like it always is with Pitt. Then we go on the road to Clemson. This is going to be the game that decides the season. If we split with USC and Ohio State and we're sitting there with one loss going into this game, we know if we win this game, we can control our destiny to get to the playoff. I think Clemson, as great as they've been, as great as Dabo Sweeney has looked, and has as much as he's built that program into the Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State category, I think Clemson's window has closed as a top five program. I think they, only because the ACC's ineptitude and Florida State and Miami's inability to get back to where they were when I was growing up, that's the only reason Clemson is able to continue to sleepwalk into the playoff discussion. Notre Dame goes on the road and because Sam Hartman has played Clemson every year of his career, they're in the same division as Wake Forest. Wake took him to like triple overtime last year. He gets revenge on Clemson, gets the win in Death Valley. A great game. Clemson's probably going to be undefeated. This is a Clemson, I have a lot of respect for, but I think this is the game Marcus Freeman can showcase hey, I'm here to be a big time coach. This isn't just a love story that the players wanted me. Marcus Freeman gets another stamp on his uh, profile and gets a gigantic road win at Clemson. Um, two years in a row over the Tigers would be huge for Notre Dame building this program. Then we play Wake Forest. Sam Hartman is now on our team. Wake's, Dave Clawson has done a great job building the Wake Forest program, but ultimately I think they, they take a step back this year. Because you just don't replace Wake Sam Hartman is like a Joe Montana for Wake Forest. They don't get players of that caliber that often, um, especially at a football perspective. So unfortunately for Wake, I think they take a step back. This is a this is a Notre Dame off a bye. Notre Dame beats Wake Forest at home. Then we go to Stanford, starting all over. No more David Shaw. Stanford beat us last year in South Bend. The players are going to be pissed if this game comes down to it and we're one game away from a potential playoff, we're not losing to Stanford on the farm. They've got way too much turnover. I'm just not really sure. Their entire program is in limbo with this conference realignment. They're trying to do their damnedest to get into the ACC, which makes no sense when you say, hey, the ACC and Cal and Stanford are in it. That makes no sense. But anyway, that's a whole different video in itself. I think Notre Dame beats Stanford. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid a little bit. I won't lie. I think Notre Dame goes 11-1 and one and makes the playoff. Now, if we run into Georgia or Bama or, you know, maybe Michigan, I don't know how that's going to go. I'd like to tell you that I think we can turn a corner under Marcus Freeman and at least be competitive and not get blown out in a national semifinal. But I think that Notre Dame, worst case, we go 9-3 and three and we lose all the big games or we win one and lose to Louisville or NC State. That's worst case. And I would be okay with that. you got to remember, this is Marcus Freeman's second year, and he wasn't a head coach prior to coming to Notre Dame. My, realistically, if he can go 10-2, and two, I would be happy with that. But something in my core, and I don't know why, I'm always, and guys, trust me, I am not one of these guys that comes on here, and fan is short for fanatic, but I don't sit here and talk about Notre Dame like it's 1977 anymore. I am very realistic when I say, yeah, Notre Dame can't match up with Georgia. Notre Dame can't match up with Alabama. 
on a given Saturday. They just don't have the players. But something about having a quarterback with Sam Hartman's pedigree, with his experience, with his intangibles, with his skill set and his knowledge of the game, and Marcus Freeman being a defensive guy and having guys like Benjamin Morris that can maybe lock, not lock down, but can slow down a number one receiver. Maybe one play, he tips a ball and Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't get that play that he gets because he can separate from the Michigan State or the, the Minnesota corner. That's the difference between being a good team, a really good team, and being a team that can play for a championship. Now, I'm not saying Notre Dame's going to win the national championship, but I think this is the best Notre Dame team coming into a season. Now, injuries can happen. We've got a lot of things that we know, but I think this is one of the best teams coming into a season that Notre Dame has had in a long time. Like, Go back to the 2006 team that was ranked second or whatever when the year started. This team's better than that team was. Um, we got the quarterback. We've got a great running back. We need to lean on Audric Estime. Let's not get in love with the fact that we have Sam Hartman and try to throw 50 times a game. Let's run the ball with this offensive lineman, with guys like Joe Walt, first-round NFL picks on the offensive line, first and second and third round all day long for sure. Let's lean on those boys up front. Let's play the run and on defense. Get after the quarterback. You've got eight returners on defense. Benjamin Morrison is going to be an All-American corner. He's a big-time player. Let's go after these guys and be physical and be fast and play football like we look like we're a top-10 team. That's all we can ask for in Marcus Freeman's second year. 10-2 and two is very much on the table. I'm going to put some faith in Marcus Freeman, and I'm going to say he can go out there and win an extra game. He can steal one from Dabo, or he can steal one from an established Lincoln Riley and go 11-1 and one and avoid landmines in Raleigh, in Louisville, in Durham, against Pitt, against, uh, you know, teams that maybe probably shouldn't be able to beat Notre Dame most weekends. 11-1, um, and one, at worst case, a New Year's Six Bowl, that would be probably a playoff spot. And then next year, this whole landscape of the sport changes. We're going to have Oregon and Iowa playing as conference games. We're going to have 12 teams in the playoff. College football next year is going to be completely different than when it was um, growing up for me. So I'm excited for that. But Let's close this playoff era outright and let's sneak into that four-team playoff one more time and see what happens. Worst case, we get blown out. Well, we've been there th two or three times before, so that's nothing new. Maybe we screw around and win a game and go to the national championship. I'm not predicting that. I'm just saying, hey, if TCU can get to it, why can't Notre Dame? Go Irish. Thank you guys so much. This is Tyler with Loft Sports signing off.